It was very nice, Elvin. They're just nervous to clap. Would you stand as you are able and join with me in our call to worship? God of glory and mercy, before his death and shame, your son went to the mountaintop, and you revealed his life in glory, where prophets witnessed to him and you proclaimed him your son. But he returned to die among us, Help us face evil with courage, knowing that all things, even death, are subject to your transforming power. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join in singing, we pray for peace.
As agents of peace, let us reaffirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. You may be seated. It's good to have these little ones. And parents of little ones, take a deep breath. If you need to pass it and have somebody hold your baby, I know a few folks would be willing. So, our Old Testament lesson today comes from Exodus chapter 34. We're in verses 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
have the children would come forward, I have something to share with y'all. Good morning, how you doing? I couldn't put this in my bag because it was too, uh, too big. I have something to show y'all. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm not sure. That's Jesus. It's a picture of Jesus that someone, you know, painted. Uh, we don't have anything from his time, you know, but people had an idea. This is a fancy picture, isn't it? Yes. Could we say it's beautiful? It's beautiful. Yeah, I think it is. It, it, uh, and we're, we're real proud that it's here. And uh, I wanted to show you all today. First, let's just, I want to make sure that you know this, and we, we all can remember this. We'll never, ever meet a person that Jesus doesn't love. Let me put that in a positive way. Everybody we ever meet is loved by Jesus. Okay? Is that right? That is right. It sure is. Yes. Uh, Lily, does Jesus love you? Yes. Lily, does Jesus love Pastor Joe? Did you say that? Let's get a yes on that one first, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But... uh so everybody, and if this picture came to us, let me see. Got to read this. The words underneath it say, Volunteers in Mission, Russia, that's the name of the place, 2003. Were you born in 2003, Lily? I don't think so. Yeah, look at them. Okay, so we had people... Uh, Neil and Lou Kennard were their names. They went to Russia to help with the church there, and they must have picked this up while they were there and brought it back. Did anyone else here go with them that you know of? I wasn't here in 2000. I mean, I was in the world, but not in this part. 2003. Uh, I know Sam Neesmith, one of our pastors, was in, uh, along because I talked with uh, both Neil and Lou about it being with him. Uh, but they brought it back to us. And, you know, uh, it's good to know that the church is in lots of places in the world. And that means that God can work with them to do his good things. And there's some good things that need to be done in the part of the world called Russia. Uh, but we've been doing, and we know that God will be doing some good things there too. But we need good things done in our world too, don't we? And, and it's, I think it's old, but I don't know how old, okay? It, does it look older than pastor or not older than pastor? It's, let me just show you a little bit here. Do I look older with this gone? Yes, yes. I will say, Mrs. Carson had me trim my beard back because I looked old as their ages. But anyway, we're about the same age. It's an oldest, oldest type of picture. But uh, let's remember, the church is in different places to be helpful and to even change bad things. We pray for our church everywhere. Let's just do that together right now. Dear God, we pray for your church in all of its places here and around the world. Uh, use us to make a big difference. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thanks for listening so well. We'll see you in a little bit. I think that uh, Pastor... It's very golden. It is golden, yes, yes. Uh, I think there's a uh, uh, junior church is happening now. Darwood, Pastor Darwood's going to help you know where to go. You ready to go with him? Be nice. I think they went around that way. Yes.
Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many responsibilities that we hold. For the little hearts in this church that are desperate for us to love on them and fill them with you. We thank you, God, for our volunteers, for the ways they share themselves, for their dedication, God. Father God, we ask that you would continue to guide us with your Holy Spirit, that we would know the direction we are called to go in and how to love and serve you. Father God, we lift up a world full of conflict and danger and destruction, God. We know that you ask us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk with you. But that seems hard in dark days like this. Grant us wisdom and peace in our hearts. Help us remember those who are in harm's way. Help us be in continual prayer. We pray these things as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to hear with me the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, reading from the middle of uh, chapter 9. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of the things they had seen. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This time let us go to God in prayer again. And as we pray, may we again bring our own religious experience up to date by asking God to forgive us of all of our sins, to cleanse our lives of all the things that should not be in them, 
and to help us at this very moment be the persons for him he would have us be. Now let us pray for at least three persons who are connected with us in this service, calling their names silently unto God and asking that he would bless them in a very special way during this service. We remember now those of this church and community who are sick, or bereaved, or having difficulties of any kind, and pray God's blessings upon them. And then I would ask you, with your eyes open, you would pray for me as I speak to you. To God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. So a long time ago, after I was 21, though, Bruce, but a long time ago, uh, I was associate pastor at Virginia Beach, and I'm at this church, Oceanfront, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Monday morning, early, entering into the, the office complex, big church there, got to my door, and on the door was a post-it, kind of at an angle, a note written kind of fast, see me. And I knew who what it was right off. I'd never gotten a note like that before. Friends, I don't think I got any more. Senior pastor. Now, I needed some notes. I'm not saying that, you know, in, in the future. But, but he, he, he found out the best way is to just, you know, nip it in the bud type of thing, not to go Barney Fife on you, but, you know, just uh, so when something would happen, we just get it straight right that second. But what happened was in the sermon the day before, he, he laid all this out for me. When I said how much I love the mountains more than the beach, oh, he took a while to explain to me that the next time I do that would be the last time I would preach at Virginia Beach and I met this church because they made all of their money in the world off of the ocean and people come to the ocean, people love the ocean a whole lot more than mountains. <laughs> and I've been pretty careful since, you know. I go to the beach when Ms. Carson says go to the beach. I don't like sand, but I will just frolic through the sand as much as frolicking as I can do or anything like that. So, you know, whatever. But, no. but I kind of like the mountains in Scripture. Gene Woolridge is in heaven now. I think he will look down and say, yes, you can talk about the Bible. Just don't affect the bottom line at Virginia Beach. Okay. Uh, and Luke, oh my goodness, Jesus, uh, as, as he goes up to the mountain with uh, Peter, John, James. Last time he was up that mountain, prayed all night long about who he's going to pick to be his disciples. Have y'all ever prayed all night long? Janet, we pray all night long for somebody. You know what I mean? But praying all night long about what we're going to do and what God wants, what God plans. You know, that Jesus was up there for that. Jesus is on the mountain, I think, at uh, the time of ascension, after his crucifixion, after the resurrection. In Luke's gospel, in second volume, Acts, Jesus with disciples following resurrection. But then Acts says, from the Mount of Olives, they, they came back after Jesus had ascended. He ascends at the end of the gospel too, but that ascension time, mountain places. Now, I have a MYF, we're changing gears for a second, MYF quiz. It's not fill in the blank, but complete the saying, okay? I'll give you an easy one. Let me get that paper up. 
don't want to say too much. I'm going to start, and then you just continue. The Lord bless you and good. The Lord make his excellent. Okay, and I'm let me just do this myself because I wasn't sure how to break it up and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his this is a hard one. The Lord lift up his honey. Okay. And give you, amen. NYF benediction, right? And no offense meant, and I know it's not you, Bruce. Anyone remember whether the Epworth League used this as benediction? Maybe no one remembers Epworth League. That's all right. That's all right. I don't either. I don't either. I've heard people talk about it. It's numbers. It's Aaron's blessing, the Arianic blessing, Okay. And at the very beginning of Luke, remember back at Christmas time, old Zechariah, the priest, who he had finally won the year only lifetime event for the priest to be in the Holy of Holies and to offer sacrifice and to come out and bless the people. You know he can't talk, right? Because he doesn't believe the angel about John the Baptist coming. And he comes outside ready to bless. No mouth. No words. He doesn't do the blessing. And Luke's gospel makes us wait, I think, for Jesus at the very end. On a mountain, I think. But to, to give us that blessing. That the Lord's face would just shine. Oh, my have y'all ever heard of, a, of an educator, Dr. Catherine Kersey? Almost her entire career, she was uh, teaching early childhood education at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. Any teachers heard of her, Catherine Kersey? Ah. She passed in August. I might have known. I did not know. I just I looked up just to. Make sure I had names and things right about her. Uh, we invited her to come to back to Virginia Beach. I'm sorry, Virginia Beach, I'm at this church to talk with parents and Sunday school teachers and preachers and all of us about uh, ch early childhood people. Do you know why we had to do that? Let me just. Sorry, does it make sure? Uh, we had discipline problems with the children. <laughs> and they must have been pretty bad, okay, if it had risen to the thing like we got to bring in somebody, you know. Uh, and mercy, we brought in a good one. If you have any chance to read her stuff, I think she has some uh, videos are still there. She, she, she was on faculty at uh, Old Dominion 45 years. She died this past uh, summer. Uh, 86 years old, uh, and they called her Kitty. I had no idea that. You know, all I know is Miss Kitty from the Long Branch. But, but <laughs> she, uh, she was just, just, and and I remember things she told us, like she gave us things like forever. She said, "They don't want to come to church." Well, let's just make sure, because listen, they will value what you value. Oh, mercy. She was supposed to be talking to these little children that were messing up and just giving us a fit, right? But she came in and said, now, listen, parents, if y'all are kind of not real sure about whether you want to be at church on Sunday morning or not, they'll know that. If you spend time riding to church or riding back from church, talking bad about church, they'll, 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 they'll learn that. You know, that's consistency, that's that little thing, and you need to be consistent, you know. And so some things that just were way beyond her, what pay, we didn't pay her anything hard, her pay level to be there, but she helped us in different things. I'd invite that into all of our consciousness. But the primary thing, the main takeaway, when she was talking as to what was a core belief for her, Every child deserves, has a right 
to have a face light up when they come into a room. Can you believe that? Every child has, and she wasn't just saying, you know, that'd be kind of neat. You want to do something neat for your child? Light your face up. No, she was saying, it, it's like, it, it is how the world is put together. That is a given right. She didn't have to say it was from God. We knew that. Mercy. Now, I know we're wearing these masks, and that makes it hard. Don't embarrass Lynn, but she can smile with a mask on. You know what I mean? You do, you do girl. It's like, their eyes, something. So, I mean, you need to cultivate it when we're under pandemic and things like that. But, boy, it's not the mask that's the problem sometimes. We can be just so full of ourselves, so busy with ourselves, so preoccupied with ourselves, all these type things. And yet, it might be that we could just find ways to do that. I bet I could get you to list today people that have given you that sometime. And I don't think it's just little bitties that need it. I think, I think we could all stand for that. You're just, a, you're just a little recognition that we are and that, that we matter, that we count. So she was, I, I have no idea how that played out in the life of that church. It didn't leave me there very, very long. Uh, but I, I, I will tell you, it will play out well as you invest the light of your countenance into people. I think President Putin could have had some FaceTime coming along. I'm afraid that didn't happen. I don't know that. I don't know. I really, I don't know anything about his childhood. I know about the church in his country. It's not near what any country needs for church. But I tell you, they kept it going, didn't they? When it ceased to be illegal and folk were doing. A communion all together. I mean, we, if we weren't doing it for like 50 years, we wouldn't remember how to do it if you wouldn't help us. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, you know, I've had meetings with staffs talking about what we're going to do at Christmas time, and we have no idea what we did last Christmas. I'm serious. And when Christmas on Sunday, one time, it was a 13-year span between. We messed up big time. You know, it's a, it's a, oh, it's a lot to think about when we, you know. But, but we do pray for the church in countries that are in conflict, in countries who are putting forward the conflict. We have a United Methodist Church. We have, we have a conference in Russia. We have a conference in the Ukraine. And we have, we have bishops. You know, y'all know we have bishops? Bishops to love, huh? Some churches don't have bishops to love. They say, no, we don't need no bishop. We be all ourselves. I said, oh. But we have bishops to love. But there's one, sometimes bishops have one conference. Bishop Lewis has one conference. Sometimes two conferences. We had a bishop back in the, uh, oh, by us, back in the 1970. Bishop Herrick, he came to be our bishop. And he says, this is a lot of work. He did. I mean, he, he, was, he would merge the church. He was evangelical, united brethren. And, and, and he, uh, it was just different. He said, I think I'll retire. They let him. <laughs> so Bishop Cannon, he was serving one of the conferences in North Carolina. He was theirs and ours. Had two of them. It was a mess when UVA and Juke were playing. I'm not kidding you. I thought we were going to lose him. You know, much prayer over that. Yes, indeed. But we have one bishop that's the bishop serving the Ukraine conference serving the Russia conference, one bishop over both those places. 
I'll put his name out, okay, in the next email. Y'all want to pray for that guy? And what might come, huh? We can do all sorts of diplomacy. We can do all sorts of, you know, uh, response for response. But let's us not leave out God and his church and of Jesus. That is really shining a light on all of his people. It really is. Sometimes the world seems very dark. We've had times of that together, times of that. And just when maybe something is getting better, other things come. But friends, we can count on Jesus and count on his desire. His will, his provision, the light of his countenance being on us, making the whole world wish they were in NYF together, making the whole world wish that we could find the right way, the better way. I said in my uh, worship preview that we don't know that a mountain for Luke's gospel was the, the place called Mount Calvary. Uh, there are no geographical depictions in Scripture. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, not in Acts. But we think of that as a place. And we think about uh, that 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 is a place that Jesus in the darkest time was able to show uh, forgiveness, was able to show faithfulness, was able to commit himself, and I believe all of us into God's spirit. And he continued to want that for every one of us and anyone through the world. But for us today, let's, let's make sure that we are receiving that. Make sure that, that that is our precious gift of this day. Jesus' love for all of us, but also for me. So much so that he's at a cross and that he has won for us the real battle of the world. We'll sing together uh, the Old Rugged Cross. Methodist preacher wrote this in the uh, 19, just, just a few years before we started to be church here. Bruce, you weren't alive, but it's back, back, back in the day. Let's stand, please, for Old Rugged Cross.
Go forth now in peace, bearing the light of Christ and the peace of God. And may God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you. Amen.